Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a system of equations, a polynomial system in two variables. We have x plus y equals 1 and x to the fifth power plus y to the fifth power equals 211. I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. For my first method, I'm going to use substitution. From the first equation, I can write y as 1 minus x, and then I can go ahead and plug it in here. So we get x to the fifth plus 1 minus x to the fifth equals 211. Is this going to give us a quintic equation? The answer is no. It's going to be quartic because x to the fifth minus x to the fifth, they're going to cancel out. But to keep a long story short, if you expand it, add it all up, uh, you know, simplify it, you're going to get the following. 5x to the 4th minus 10x cubed plus 10x squared minus 5x minus 210 equals 0. So that's going to be a quartic equation and you can solve it. But we can go ahead and simplify because all the coefficients are multiples of 5. So we can go ahead and divide both sides by 5 without changing the roots. And that gives us the following equation. And we talked about um, dividing by 5 as a shortcut in one of the videos. Remember, you double the number and then uh, take out a 0 or divide by 10. So that's how I divide numbers by 5, usually, mentally. Anyways, so that's a quartic equation, but this time it's monic. So the coefficient of x to the fourth is 1, which is nice. And what you can do is you can look for a rational solution because you can't figure out rational solutions before finding the rational ones. And you can use the rational root theorem by looking at the divisors or factors of 42. Okay, that's what you need. And 42 has quite a few factors like plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, plus minus 6, plus minus 7, plus minus 14, plus minus 21, and plus minus 42. So there are, there are a lot of candidates. It's like 16 of them. And you kind of have to test each one, and at the end, you're going to figure it out. But if there's going to be more than one, then you might get it faster. Anyways, so to keep a long story short again, I'm going to give you the factored form of this quartic, which is going to give us the solutions. So it's going to be x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 3 multiplied by x squared minus x plus 7. The reason we write the third factor as a quadratic is because it's not factorable, and you're going to notice that it has non-real roots. So from here, if you set this equal to 0, you get x equals negative 2, x equals 3. And from the quadratic, you get complex solutions. That's going to be 1 plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That is going to be negative 27 divided by 2. And then you can write that as... 1 plus minus 3 root 3i divided by 2. So those are going to be the complex solutions. Great. And these are going to be the real solutions. I mean, the, or they're all complex, but this, this is like non-real. Okay. Unreal, non-real. So those are going to be the solutions. That's it. And let's go ahead and talk about the second method. For my second method, we're going to take advantage of symmetry. Symmetry is important, especially for these kinds of systems. So I'll rewrite the original one, x plus y equals 1, x to the fifth plus y to the fifth equals 209. And of course, you can always guess and check. And if the numbers are not good, then you can't really, you know, guess and check. But anyways, it just bugs me. So let me ch change that a little bit. Okay. y to the fifth. Okay, great. Now. Here's what, what I'm going to do. I'm going to work with x plus y equals 1 first. So can I find two numbers whose sum is 1? At the, at the same time, I want to, you know, keep uh, or preserve symmetry. So I'm going to set x equal to 1 half plus a and set y equal to 1 half minus a. Notice that they're kind of like conjugates, but their sum is 1. That's what matters, right? So we're going to plug that in to the second equation. And the good thing about that is some terms are going to cancel out. Okay? So let's go ahead and do it. 
If you plug it in, we're going to get 1 half plus a, which is x to the fifth power, plus 1 half minus a, which is y, to the fifth power equals 211. If you expand this, you know, take care of the fractions, divide, simplify, whatever, you're going to get the following equation. 16a to the fourth plus 8a squared minus 675 equals zero. Great. And this is kind of like a biquadratic. So by calling a squared equals b, you can kind of turn it into a quadratic equation, solve for it, and then set the b equals a squared again and find the a values. But um, sometimes you get non-real solutions because the square of a real number cannot be negative. So here is what the real roots are. a equals negative 5 halves and a equals 5 halves. Okay? And then obviously the others are easy to find. Um, but anyways, a equals negative 5 halves means what? It means x equals 1 half plus a, remember? So you're just going to add 1 half minus 5 halves. That's going to be negative 4 halves, which is negative 2. So from here, x is going to be negative 2. And this is going to be 1 half plus 5 halves, which is 3. So x is going to be 3. But remember, x plus y is 1. Their sum is 1. So if x equals negative 2, then y is going to be 3. If x is 3, y is going to be negative. So it's kind of like vice versa, right? So those are going to be the pairs. And you wanted to find the complex solutions. You can go ahead and, you know, uh, just divide this by a squared minus 25 over 4. Or you can also write it as 4a squared minus 25 over 4. But since we have a, uh, we don't have any fractions, you can go ahead and divide it by 4a squared minus 25. And that's going to give you the other two solutions. I hope that makes sense. So here's what I'm trying to say here. We have 16a to the fourth power plus 8a squared minus 625. And one of the factors we do know is 4a squared minus 25. And the other factor is not too hard to guess because we do know that um, it's going to have 4a squared. And we do have a 25. So we can go ahead and try to divide 675 by 25. That should be um, 27. So this is probably a positive uh, 27. Or if there's any a terms, you're gonna, you can tell. But just by distributing, you can figure out the rest. Make sense? Okay, so that's what I wanted to give you a little bit of, uh, you know, how you can find the nonlinear complex solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and we're just going to finish up with that. So I graphed these two, not functions, but relations. They're relations. And remember, recently, we've just looked at a, the graph of a relation, right? That was kind of, I think, interesting, like x to the power log x plus y to the power log y. And this is also an interesting graph because if you look at the, the sum of the fifth powers, you kind of see something that looks like an elliptic curve. But anyways, um, you get the idea. They only intersect at two points, and those are going to give you the x and y values. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.